Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract, and if we go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com and scroll on down to school, we are on lesson five. Whoa, what happened to my scroll? <laughs> Let's try that again. We are on lesson five, arrays and loops, and indeed we've already done a couple of videos on arrays. So we've seen a video on arrays, which is a way to store a list of things. There's one right there. And then we uh, saw a video on the methods of arrays, push, pop, shift, unshift, various things that we can do with arrays. And now we're moving to loops. Loops is a way that we can do something over and over again. There's actually a loop in there. And uh, we can easily loop through an array and show you each element or gain, gain access to each element of the array. So that's certainly one handy thing to be able to do with loops. Let's go to some code though, and we can uh, take a look at our last code, I suppose. We'll reduce that down. This was our lesson five code that we were working on where we had an array of candies Afterwards, I kind of looked up lollipop and realized I was spelling lollipop wrong the whole time. <laughs> it's my mother's fault. I always blame my mother for my spelling <laughs> inheritance. Uh, was that the only place we had a lollipop? Anyway, that's fine. Um, this was our old code, so you can see that we were working a lot on building arrays and working with arrays. Obviously, if you've just arrived at this lesson, uh, <laughs> you're wanting to specifically look at loops, that's fine. But uh, if you're wanting to learn how to code JavaScript, you should start with some earlier lessons. Yes, yeah, so start from the beginning and we'll see you back here once you get here. Okay, so why don't we take a look at candies, just to remind ourselves of what's in there. We had made a few different versions of these candies. Uh, so we'll open this up in a browser. Those are not the candies, that came from something else. F12 uh, to get the console. And presumably some of these things, 105, 106, 107, chocolate, gum, and lollipop. So there's chocolate, gum, and lollipop. That'll be good. We can definitely loop through that to find each element. But before we do, let's take a look at a general loop. So we'll do a slash slash and put a bunch of these and say loops. So there we go, and a bunch of those. Hey. All right, so a general loop, I suppose, would be a for loop. For, there's a few different types. For, uh, let i equal zero, so we'll start at zero. Keep on looping as long as i is less than 10. And increase our i each time, and then we do that block of code right there. All right, what do you think? Blah, blah. So obviously this has a lot, a lot happening, and that makes it hard for beginners to sort of understand what is going on here. It's not the end of the world, but it's, uh, I still make mistakes when I, when I do these things up. Sometimes I end up putting a comma there by accident and, and find it very annoying. In Zim, we've made an easier loop, but uh, we'll show you that later. All right, so this is a for loop. And the outer structure is pretty good. Check, check out the outer structure. For, uh, what's going on in these round brackets? Do those squiggly brackets. And remember, function for what's going on in the round brackets, do the squiggly brackets. And indeed, we haven't seen conditionals yet, but conditionals are if what's in these round brackets, do these squiggly brackets. So we see conditionals in the next lesson. So you see, at least we've got the same kind of outer structure here. So for uh, what's in these round brackets, do the squiggly brackets. I think the issue primarily is what's in the round brackets. <laughs> we know a block of code. This is the same as in a function. This is a block of code that it's going to do. The slight difference is it does this block of code uh, maybe a bunch of times, usually a bunch of times. So let's see the results of this, and maybe it will make a little bit more sense, and we'll continue to talk about it. Uh, simply, I suppose, we could zog what i is, because we're changing i each time. 
The neat thing about loops is we can sort of keep track of which loop number we're on. So I will be like that. And we start counting at zero. So that's why we're setting this at zero to start. And this is the condition to keep on looping. And this is what we're going to do after we loop. So zero the first time. Once we end the loop, we're going to increase i by one. That's what that means. I'll talk about that in just a sec. So we should see i go from zero to what? i is less than 10, 0 to 9. And if you think about that, 0 to 9 is actually 10 numbers. OK, so let's try that. And we'll have a look in the, in the console here. And there we go, 0 to 9. So those are the results of our loop, 0 to 9. Neat, huh? And remember, Zog, if, if you want, console.log, that's the raw JavaScript version of Zog. In Zim, we use Zog. Don't try and use Zog if you're in raw JavaScript. <laughs> Don't go in for that JavaScript interview and say, well, you can just Zog that, because they might not know, <laughs> they might not know what you mean. Not yet. Once uh, Zim reaches a world domination, then sure. Anyway, uh, let i equals 0. So this is the starting. Uh, I don't know if it's a starting condition, but it's an initial condition. So it's uh, the starting starting condition, followed by a semicolon, and then the, uh, the loop condition. So keep on looping as long as that condition is true. We haven't really seen conditionals yet, so I, I don't know. It's, it's no big deal. Anyway, this is obviously the less than keep keep on looping as long as i is less than 10. You can say less than or equal to 10 and start at 1 if you want. Then you're going to get numbers from 1 to 10. But if we're accessing an array, it's often easiest to start at 0 and then it's kind of nice and we know we have 10 things but as long as we're less than that the index starts at one less than so the loop condition another semicolon and then uh, um, I don't know the operation we'll call it I guess so what are we doing each time you can actually go minus minus but that causes problems because um, afterwards it'll subtract one from zero and go negative one and it, it won't go any further uh, we'd have to switch these. We'd say loop from i equals 10, keep on looping as long as it's actually 10 minus 1. So uh, there's your starting 9, loop as long as i is greater than 0 or equal to 0, greater than or equal to 0. So there's the reverse of that, and that would loop backwards. You want to see it? <laughs> Hope it works. <laughs> Didn't really pay much attention to it. Nine eight seven six five four three two one zero. There we go. So that's looping backwards. Yum. So i minus minus. Uh, right. We need to talk about that i plus plus i minus minus thing. So how that works is if you say um, let x equals ten, and then you say x plus plus like that. And then we'll zog what x is. <laughs> x, yes, there we go. We'll zog what x is. And now x will have 1 added to it. So a plus plus is an operator, an increment operator that just increases that value by 1. It actually is a bit tricky. It's a, called a post incrementation operator, which means if we were to zog this value right here, if we were to zog x plus plus, it it will zog x because the plus plus doesn't have happen until the assignment. So if you were to assign that uh, assign this something like let y equal to x plus plus like that, uh, let's do it this way. We will then zog y. Y will be equal to ten because that's what that's what it was at the time. Then it gets plus plus after the assignment. So this is post assignment increment or I don't know. I can't quite remember what that operator is called, <laughs> but that's what it's doing. It's incrementing. It's, it's adding 
to it. So let's try this out and see if it works. I know that looks a bit complex. I may as well tell you it, otherwise it, it gets very confusing at times if you don't realize what's going on there. Most, most people don't. Uh, how do we refresh? There it is. So now we get up here, we get 10 and 11 coming from 113 and 114. Uh, 113 and 114, this is saying 10. Now there's also a pre, so let's copy this and comment it out. There's a pre assignment operator and <laughs> that is plus plus x. So now it will add 1 to x, but when it assigns it, it's assigned 11. And so now both of these will be 11. Refresh. And there they are both at 11. OK, so that's a little history on that. Now it goes a touch beyond, I suppose. Uh, let's we usually use this one, but you just have to be aware if you happen to assign the results, then it may not happen exactly when you expect. We can also say um, x plus, well, May as well do it here. We can say x plus equals um, 20, for instance. What this does is it adds 20 to x. OK, so that's the operator right there, plus equals whatever. So uh, 1 would be the same as x plus plus. But um, this is handy because we can add as many as we want. So now we're going to increase x by 20. And we refresh here. And we had already increased it by 1, I guess. And now we're getting 20 plus 11 is 31. So indeed, that does work. All right, well, we'll leave those there. And there's a minus equals. There's also a divided equals and a, a multiply equals. So you just use the divided equals or the multiply equals or the minus equals there. And you can do the same thing. Okay, so we're down here. That's what that means. We're now looping 10 times. So we're back to our loop. Uh, what else can we do? We could loop by two. So just so you know, you could go plus equals two there. And then each time it loops, uh, it goes, it increases by two. Let's have a look and see what that does. We refresh. Zero, two, four, six, eight. Zero, two, four, six, eight. Most of the time we're increasing by one. You can also stop a loop from looping, or you can skip. Why don't we skip? Let's skip a number. So, uh, oh, we would need a conditional for that. Well, OK, we see conditionals next time, but we can say if i is double equal to 5, then we can say continue like that. So what this is saying is if, if i happens to be 5, this is the assignment operator, uh, then please continue the loop. So do not go here, go to the next number. So this um, goes to next loop, goes, uh, how about we say, directly, directly to next loop. OK, let's try it. We refresh here. So now we'll see everything but the 5. 0, 1, 2, 3. Note the 5 is missing. Oh, <laughs> it, comes, it comes after 4. Note that the 5 is not between the 3 and the 4. Anyway, there's the 5 missing, between the 4 and the 6. <laughs> oh boy. Um, there's also a break. So if we copy that, we could break. And break uh, leaves the loop, stops the loop. Stops the loop. There we go. And we refresh here. One, two, three, four, and we never even uh, zogged five because when I was five, we break right here, and that leaves the loop. So that's some loop control. There is also a way to assign the loop a, a reference, and you can break out of a certain loop, but those are for nested loops. Speaking of nested loops, that is certainly possible. Do you want to see what a nested loop would look like? Um, it would be a four 
let j, we often use j. Uh, now you don't have to use i, this is, uh, this is your own name, but i stands for iterator, uh, or increment iterator, I think. Yeah, which is just sort of like a scientific term. It means, hey, here's what where we're keeping count. <laughs> you could put count in there, let count equal zero, count, etc. Anyway, when we do a double loop for let j equal to zero, uh, let's go for j is less than five, we'll do, and to j plus plus. And then inside here, here's our body of code that does. We can zog i in there. We can zog i comma j and see what this looks like. So now it's going to do i first on the outside. And then for each i, it's going to loop five times. So i will be 0, j will be 0. i will be 0, j will be 1. i will be 0, j will be 2. I am a loop. Nice. Finally, once it's finished all these j's, it then leaves this loop and comes back to this loop and increases i. So then i will be 1, j will be 0, j starts all over again. All right, let's try a route. You like that? We refresh here. And here they are all are 0, 0, 0, 1, etc. Just as we said, there's the 1's. So five times all the way up to the nine, and then the nine five times zero to four. Cool, huh? So that's a loop within a loop. All right, let's practice looping through an array and see what happens there. Why don't we comment all that stuff out so we don't keep on seeing it, and we'll start all over again. Are you ready? Four, uh, let i equal zero. Don't use a const there const i. That will make errors because i keeps on changing. When it changes that number, that's a different object, so const will break. Uh, we did use var all the time in the past, but now we're using let, which is fine. So let i equals zero. And how, how many times are we going to keep on looping? We're going to loop through candies. So candies has three things in it, so we could say i, as long as i is less than three, we're good. 3 happens to be the length of the array. But if we change the length of candies, then this 3 would be wrong. So we usually use candies.length, like that. So if you're looping through an array, you may as well do it from 0 to i is less than the length of the array, and that works out just fine. And then... Uh, so once again, that's not less than or equal to. That would be wrong. That'd be one too many. Less than. And then we're going to increase our i each time, most likely, and do what's between these squiggly brackets. Do our block of code. Now, we have zogged in the past. We have zogged i. What we're wanting to zog now to see is what's in candies. We want to be able to get each of the things in candies. Now, we know how to do something like that. Candies at zero will give us the first one. Hopefully you're, oops, hopefully you're already seeing maybe what we're going to end up doing here. But let's try zogging candies at zero and see what we get. We refresh here. So we got down here at the bottom chocolate three times. So three times it told us chocolate. This is what our array looks like. It's got chocolate, gum, and lollipop. So chocolate's the first. All right, well, uh, if we said one, it would be three times it would say gum. So we want it to be zero the first time. The next time we want it to be one. The next time we want it to be two. But we can't do this. That's, that's not how it's done. We have to, this number has to change each time. You see how we do it? i is indeed changing each time. So i starts at 0. The next time we loop, i is 1. The next time we loop, i is 2. So that's what we want to put in there, i. See how well that works? Now we're going to get candies at 0. The next time it loops, candies at 1. Then candies at 2. And we're going to zog each one. Well, let's try her. We refresh here. Chocolate, gum, and lollipop. 
chocolate gum and lollipop. So now instead of uh, this this one, we, we just zog the whole thing. We console.log the whole thing. It's not very helpful if you can't get at each element. Now we could hard code each element. We could have just said, you know, outside of here, we could have said zog candies at zero. Uh, followed by the rest of them. We can put that right in one zog if we want, comma, comma. And that would be at one, and this would be at two. And that's fine, that's certainly doable. But what happens when we have a hundred things, or a thousand things? That's a neat thing. You know, we didn't show you, but uh, we can loop through a thousand things in an instant. It's just like, it's just the same as looping through five things. It's just go, there it is, a thousand things. <laughs> So it's a wonderful factory, this, um, this looping. Speaking of factories, why don't we try creating something in a loop then? So let's log that out and let's um, make something in a loop. Alrighty, um, we will uh, do a loop for var, or nope, con uh, not const, let, there we go for let i equal zero. Um, keep on looping as long as i is less than 10. We'll make 10 things. And we'll increase our i each time. And inside here, we will make a new circle. And we will set the circle to be 50 in radius and blue in color. We'll dot loc this circle somewhere. So if we loc the circle at say 100 and the stage height divided by two, there. So now it's gonna be centered um, height wise, but we're locating all of them at 100 then let's see what we get. So here we are building 10 circles and we refresh here. Oh, what are these things that are already here? Um, there's the 10 circles at 100 over and where'd all these other ones go, uh, come from? So let's go up candies, names, it must have been a tile somewhere where we made multi-dimensional teeth monsters, there's the tile. So we'll just comment out the tile and we'll try making our own tile. Basically, that's what the tile's doing. The tile's doing a double loop to loop across and then loop down as well. Refresh here. There it is. There's 10 circles in the same place. Sorry, hopefully you're not looking at this in a big screen. Presenting it to 100 people and they're all going, Bleh. All right, so we've made circles and they're all starting at 100. But how would we move those over? Hmm, well, it's handy. We've got this i, and the i is going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So we could use that i here. For instance, what if we wanted to move it over, each one over 100 plus 100 times i? So now if you think about it, it's always going to start at 100. The next one, when i is 0, this will be 0. Therefore, we're going to loc it at 100. But when i is 1, we're going to loc it at 100 plus 100, 200. When i is 2, we're going to loc it at 300, etc. So this shifts the circle over. Nice. Did you think math could be that handy? I mean, great. Oop, look at that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. <laughs> okay. Let's start it at 50. Maybe that'll look perfect. Can you imagine if it was? I, I don't know. I think the uh, not quite perfect. Okay, so it's because it's 1024 wide, so we're a little bit off. Uh, but we're close. Okay, so there's a bunch of circles. We can also do things like uh, change the color each time if we want. You want to see how that can be done? Let's try that out, and that might be the last thing that we that we get done in this video. But this is wonderful. We've seen a basic loop. Uh, we've looped backwards. We've done a loop within a loop. We've um, created some things with the loop. 
So that's neat, and move them along. Now imagine if we had an array. So uh, did we loop through an array yet? I can't remember. Yes, we did. We looped through the array of candies. But what if we had an array of colors? Do we have an array of colors? Colors, we do. Const colors is equal to blue, green, and pink. Okay, so there's some colors. Let's loop through those colors. It won't quite work, but maybe I can show you a trick. <laughs> do you see why it won't work? Because we don't have 10 of them. So colors, just so we know, colors is equal to, oh crap, <laughs> uh, blue, what was it? <laughs> Pink and something. I can't remember. Anyway, colors is the array. We can make orange and pink. Uh, those weren't those weren't the ones. Green, I think it was. Orange, green, and pink. That's what colors looks like. So we'll just put it there to remind us. If we loop between zero and ten, it's going to get blue. Then it will get green. Then it will get pink. Then it will get undefined, 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 undefined for the rest. Um, but we can remedy that. Let's just start off here by saying, okay, instead of blue, let's get colors at zero, and then colors at one, colors at two. So once again, that is colors, the name of the array, at the square brackets, i. So when i is zero, we'll get blue, because that's coming from colors. So we're going to get blue, green, and pink, or whatever the colors are, I can't quite remember. But then we're going to get a bunch of undefineds. And if we pass in an undefined here, uh, we'll get black. All right, let's try it. Blue, green, pink, and then a bunch of blacks from the undefineds. So darn. I mean, we could try, uh, we could repeat these colors in the array so that that gets repeated. Or there's a trick. There's a thing called a modulus. So did you expect to learn the modulus? No. All right. It's always good for the end of a for the end of a lesson or the end of a video to show you something that you'll go home scratching your head. Well, you probably are home. <laughs> you'll scratch your head over. Okay, uh, the modulus. So the modulus is a percent sign or modulo or whatever. So the percent sign is gives, we'll call it gives the remainder, and this is a modulus, so uh, modulus, uh, I don't, I can't, I'm not sure what the modulo is actually, but I've heard it said maybe, uh, I can't, I'm not sure, anyway, modulus, percent, maybe it's the Italian version, uh, gives the remainder, so if you have, um, let's uh, try this one, uh, four percent six. What would that give? Let's zog it. Zog four percent six. So that's um, what the remainder is. This should be two. So you'll get it goes into four, and then you have two left. Okay. So we'll try that. Refresh here and open in browser if to, or uh, open in the console 12 is telling me four told me 10 times why oh we're in the loop <laughs> so 10 times is telling me what told me four <laughs> and i do that the wrong way <laughs> it told me four uh i think it may be the other way around six divided by four <laughs> it's six divided by four my apologies six divided by four and then the remainder is going to be two so what you're dividing by goes here it's it's like division. See six, and you see the division sign in there? Six divided by four gives you a remainder of two. Let's try this out. If you do it the other way around, there's two. If you do it the other way around, then anything up to the number just equals whatever you had. So when we went four, that's kind of important as well, four divided by six, um, it gives you the answer of four. So as soon as you get to six, that would be zero. So six divided by six has no remainder, but five divided by six, they count that as having a remainder of five. Four divided, they count that as having a remainder of four. So that's why we were seeing fours there. Seven, what would seven modulus six be? One. So now we've gone one more time over. 
So what we want in here is not just I, but I percent. If we've got three things, it's percent three. So this will go zero, one, two. As soon as I is three, then this goes back to zero. Cool, huh? Because no remainder. And then it goes one, two, etc. But instead of three, what should we put here? Again, colors.length. Colors.length is the length of the array. So anytime you want to cycle through an array and you're in a loop, you can just go the array with the loop number modulus the length of the array. And then it will cycle through and go 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. And therefore, it will always come up with a color. 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. Oh, uh, sorry, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, in that case. As soon as it's 3, it's back to 0. So 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. There we go, if you've got three things. All right, so this uh, gave 1, I guess, 7 modulus 6. Uh, good, I think that's it. And let's refresh here. Cool, huh? Look at that, 0, 1, 2. Back to zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero. And isn't that neat? Woohoo! So, yes, we've been learning JavaScript with creative coding. And boy, if you put this all together, you can make some amazing looking things. If you want to check those out, you can come to zimjs.com, have a look at all the examples. And uh, we're on our way to making those examples. We got to start somewhere, and we've been seeing the JavaScript basics, <laughs> and now we're going to see this. And this one. Ooh, imagine running through the world like this with rings. Yeah, those rings. You see those rings? That was made with what we're doing now. And the inverted. So zombie. Okay, right, yeah, um, those rings that were going by were made with loops and, and, and circles and stuff, the same type of deal. Uh, all this stuff you see in the Learn JavaScript, those are what are called squiggles. So there's a bunch of squiggles, and we looped to make a bunch of those squiggles. Uh, cool, huh? All right, well, come on back next time, and we'll talk more about some advanced things with loops. We'll try a different uh, different types of loops, um, maybe a while loop, and we'll also see the Zim loops. Ciao for now from Dr. Abstract. Bye-bye.